Well, good morning. Good morning. It's uh, very nice to be back in Bell Helvey and see all, all of you. And um, for those who don't know me, I'm Anthony Craig, and Anne and I live in Colliston. And we've been quite frequent visitors here. So it's very nice to be back. Thank you. And uh, Alan here tells me that everything you need to know is on your order of service. And he even adds that if you <clears throat> can't read the back page, there's pictures on the inside that you can look at. <laughs> He's always helpful, Alan. He's very helpful. Now, <clears throat> so really, I don't think I need to say more on that. And we'll come to worship. Most people I've met today have said, what a miserable day. And all I can say is in Colliston, we've been planting trees. We're planting over 15,000 trees in a community woodland. So we're very happy to have a bit of rain. <laughs> Put the trees in. Uh, Two thirds of them are in already. Let us come to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you who are his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and evermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the Lord's name be praised. There is none like the Lord our God in heaven or on earth. Praise the Lord. So let's sing to his praise, hymn 565, My life flows on in endless song. <laughs>
Let us pray. Father God, we come before you as your children, entering your presence and knowing your care. We come to worship, to praise you, and also to hear from you afresh today in your word and inspiration. Jesus Christ, as we sit here in the quiet, we remember your times of secluded prayer. We bring to you the things that cause us anguish and anxiety, knowing that you will share the burden with us. Holy Spirit, As we come before you this morning, we bring ourselves as we are, asking you to draw close to us. May your power be at work within us and around us, changing us into your likeness. Lord God, we come before you as sinners who know we are saved by your grace. We pray again for that grace and for your mercy. Grant us forgiveness for the thoughts, the attitudes, for the actions and the conversations where we did not act as your children. Help us to forgive those who have hurt us in their words or lack thereof. May we be people of mercy and grace in the same way we seek your mercy and grace for ourselves. Amen. And now we join together saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of ever heaven. Amen. Living on the coast as we do one of the fascinations for both children and adults is walking along a beach and picking up stones. Our house has little piles of stones on windowsills and elsewhere, lovingly collected. So I've got here a a bag of stones. They're not all beautiful. I'm not going to share them round. Well, I'll show you some of them there. Here you are, you see? Lots of, oh, you like that one, do you? Yeah, right. Well, she likes that one. And that. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not less sure about that. But they are all different. I mean, there's one that's all craggy and pockmarked. And then you get others a nice lump of quartz there. And the wonderful thing about this, and I know the, usually, particularly why the children like picking them up, is because they're shiny and wet. So I have here my visual, visual demonstration. Just add water and mix. I was going to bring this in full of water and drop stones into it, and it suddenly occurred to me, blimey, they'll all start overflowing if I put too many rocks in here. So I'm being very careful here, but it it does, and you can't see it from this end, from far away, of course, that's because you'll sit at the back, you know, if you (laughs) sat down the front, you'd see what I'm doing. But it does change them. They they become different. And I think, in a way, 
It's like us. There's an awful lot of pockmarked ones here. So I'm not being personal here by looking around, you know. Uh, but <coughs> they change. They change the surface and, the <coughs> and uh, particularly these sort of stripy ones with bits of quartz and so on. Uh, they, they shine in a different way and they show up. And <coughs> I think it's a bit of a parable of baptism. We are all craggy. Some of us are pockmarked. Uh, um, some of us are a bit odd looking. Others, of course, are very handsome and very nice smiling faces. I can see you all. But the water so often improves them. That's one of those nice peterhead granite ones, the pink and all. And you put the rocks in and you fill up and you, we shine differently. And I think it's a sort of parable of baptism that we come, we're all different. God has made every single one of us. We're all different. We all look different. Uh, and we are different in our characters and everything else. But <coughs> we're greatly improved by the water of baptism. God has made us to be more like him and is in our lives. So I want to think about that a wee bit, that um, the Bible tells us that God made us and that God loves us in all our individuality and differences. And Jesus came to live out that unconditional love for us. He's not bothered by how different we are. He's concerned that we should shine and glisten with that new life as shown by the stones in the water. And so today I want to focus on the power of that love. The New Testament stories after Easter tell us of the disciples in action with the, the new power and confidence given to them by the rising of Jesus. The difference made by the power of the love and forgiveness in the risen Jesus' name. So today we're looking at the story of the lame beggar met by Peter and John in the temple, or rather, we'll look at what happened after they met. If you remember Peter and John, the two leading disciples, were going to the temple to pray and laid on a mat by the gate called Beautiful, the Beautiful Gate, was this beggar. He was taken there every day. He was lame from birth, and he was asking for money to survive. And the disciples had no money. They were poor, too. So, in instead, they offered the man what they had. They offered him healing in the name and power of Jesus. So we're going to sing the story first, and then we'll go on to hear from the Bible what happened after. And this is Peter and John went to pray. Now, I think it's new to you, so Alan's going to play the tune through, and uh, then we'll join in, and possibly, if we do it well, we'll sing it twice. Well,
The first reading is from Acts chapter 4, verses 5 to 13. The next day, the Jewish leaders, the elders, and the teachers of the law gathered in Jerusalem. They met with the high priest Annas and with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the others who belonged to the high priest's family. They made the apostles stand before them and asked them, How did you do this? What power have you got? Or whose name did you use? Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, answered them, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being questioned today about the good deed done to the lame man and how he was healed, then you should all know, and all the people of Israel, should know that this man stands here before you completely well through the power of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God raised from death. Jesus is the one of whom the scripture says, the stone that you, the builders, despised turned out to be the most important of all. Salvation is to be found through him alone. In all the world, there is no one else whom God has given who can save us. The members of the council were amazed to see how bold Peter and John were and to learn that they were ordinary men of no education. They realized then that they had been the companions of Jesus. And the second reading is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 to 30. Come to me and rest. At that time, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you because you have shown to the unlearned what you have hidden from the wise and learned. Yes, Father, this was how you wanted it to happen. My Father has given me all things. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on you, and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and the load I will put on you is light. Amen. Thank you, Meg. We'll sing again hymn 606, Lord, you sometimes speak in wonders.
talk today on the theme, The Power of Love. And not surprisingly, there are several songs with that name. There's the Celine Dion song. I thought of asking Alan to sing it for us, but then I thought again, so I'll read you some words. There's the refrain we probably remember most, because I am your lady and you are my man. Whenever you reach for me, I'll do all that I can. But it goes on. We're heading for something somewhere I've never been. Sometimes I am frightened, but I'm ready to learn of the power of love. Human love is a reflection, a pale image of the love of God. When we deal with that, love, that power, we may be frightened. We may be heading for something somewhere we've never been before, but we should be ready to learn. Two weeks ago we had Easter, the resurrection and the appearances of Jesus to his disciples. And today's story of Peter and John and the lame man tells us of the amazing effects of the power of love let loose after Jesus had written, has risen. But let's face it, just how this power works is so hard to understand. <clears throat> it's wonderful that a man lame from birth is healed simply by invoking the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And we have struggles with explaining that. How? And why this man, and not countless others who suffered then and who suffer now? I hope you don't think it's too simple a response to say, my thought is this, you don't understand Easter, or Jesus, or baptism for that matter, or really anything else about God. You don't understand, you experience them. And that's what happened, had happened to the disciples. On the way to Jerusalem, before his death and resurrection, Jesus told them more than once what was going to happen to him. And the gospel writers tell us the disciples did not understand. They didn't know what he was talking about. After Easter, they lose their fear and their lack of understanding there's a new power available to them for healing and renewing. And this was a problem for the leaders of the Council of the Jews. <clears throat> they had witnessed the power, or at least they'd seen the results in the lame man. They couldn't understand it. It just didn't fit in with what they thought God was doing or should be doing, especially it didn't fit in that it was happening through these ordinary blokes, Peter and John. For goodness sake, they were uneducated, unlearned men. They couldn't know anything about God, and they shouldn't be able to do what they had done. They were people ignorant of the Torah, the Hebrew law. And the Greek word used here to describe them, actually, in the New Testament is idiotes, where we get our word idiots. The high priest and his people just couldn't accept that Peter and John, these idiots, could actually be used by God, and yet God had clearly acted. Of course, Jesus, as we heard read just now, had said that this was God the Father's way of doing things, using the unlearned and ordinary people. I think on the whole we love this story of healing, and we may laugh at the way the temple top dogs are thrown into confusion by Peter and John, but we should ask ourselves, do we accept today that God works through the unlearned, the ordinary people, Surely God gave us brains. 
Shouldn't we use them? What about doctors, scientists, researchers? We had a great friend, Ian Robertson, who's a microbiologist trained in Edinburgh, spent his whole life in the University of Zimbabwe developing uh, disease-resistant plants and making them available to poor farmers. He specifically worked on that to make sure it was the ordinary farmers that got these plants. And he's trained generations of students to follow in his way to developing these better maize and uh, sweet potato and so on. Wonderful work, brilliant. He was brilliant. And surely we should say God favors the learned or at least wants them. Everyone nowadays is urged to go to college and be skilled in a recession, learn your way to a better job. And all that is true. I do believe God wants us to use our brains to do the very best we can to think new thoughts. We need all the clever people we can get as long as we remember this. Knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom needs humility. The humility of Christ who knew everything but stooped to take punishment, pain, even death, so that the power of God could break through. Knowledge without humility may be powerful, but it's not wisdom. The temple leaders had knowledge. They had the history, the words, they knew the Bible by heart, but they were not all humble. So their knowledge, far from giving them God's wisdom, blocked God's power. And we're told now we're living in a knowledge economy. What you know makes the difference. But we need more than knowledge. We need wisdom. And that's what God means by allowing the unlearned, the ordinary people, to be the ones that understand the gospel. Because as it's often said, it's not what you know, but in the end, it's who you know that counts. And Peter and John knew Jesus. So they became agents of the power of love. And their message was that anyone could be the same as them, anyone who chose to get to know and believe in Jesus. Ordinary people who do extraordinary things because the power of God acts through them. Think of these stones this morning, all different, many of them beautiful in their own way, all transformed by the way the light shines on them through water. And so with people, Many talents, much knowledge, but so much more available and possible if we let God transform us. Remember, by the power of God's love, you are special. The American writer Brenda Euland said, Since you are like no other being ever created since the beginning of time, you are incomparable. Don't try to understand what Jesus has done. But ask God to let you experience what he can do in your life, through your life. Let's be God's shining stones. Let's be God's idiots. In the best sense of the word, the Bible sense of the word. People who may not know everything but who know Jesus as their friend. And on understanding how Jesus works, Professor William Barclay wrote, the greatest proof of Christianity is a Christian person. Can we be that person? The world needs us to be. And the final quotation, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. And that's from Jimi Hendrix.
Amen. And we ask God's blessing on our reflection on his word. Let's sing again. In 443, he is Lord, he is Lord. pray. Almighty God, we bring to you our grateful thanks for the many blessings we have, for the changing seasons, the beauty of flowers and birds and animals around us, for the growing crops and the food we receive for the companionship of friends and families, and the way your love for us shows through them. We thank you for the people who have taught us, inspired us, and encouraged us, for the health to be here today, and the faith to trust you for the future. We bring you our <clears throat> offerings of life and work and money in thanks for all you have given us. We ask your blessing that you will use us and our offerings to further your kingdom. And so we also bring before you those who suffer from the storms of life, the man-made disasters, wars and hunger, miseries imposed on others, whether by force of arms or just the easy words of criticism made by overactive tongues. We pray for governments and leaders that they may think carefully and act generously. We pray for our health staff, here and abroad as they <clears throat> work hard to care for the sick, to vaccinate, to keep up with the other illnesses in very diff difficult circumstances. 
And we pray for all those suffering personal pain and hurt, the heavy weight of depression, the sadness of broken relationships, the struggle to cope with bereavement. Jesus, you told us that your yoke is easy, your burden is light. And so we bring these things before you, asking for your peace. We ask for the lifting of burdens and the loosening of the fears that so easily grip us, to let the light of heaven disperse them as the sun lifts the summer har. We thank you that we have the chance to join together here today. And in your spirit with the faithful who have gone before us, so that these and more prayers we bring to you day by day in the confidence that you are listening, that your love links heaven and earth through Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our friend. Amen. We'll end our service singing hymn 459, Crown Him with Many Crowns. serve the Lord with the peace and the power and the love of the Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and with those whom you love forever.